I can if you need me to. No, oh, no we're no. good. All right. Um, welcome to the August 3rd edition of the Idea Share. From Key Ministry, I'm Beth Golick, and I'm here with Catherine Boyle, who is our Director of Mental Health Ministry. And I know we have some new folks on today, so um, let's just go ahead and get started. I know a couple of you maybe had some things to report um, from last week, but let's hear from you. Let us know what area of the country you're in and what is going on in your ministry area. Anybody wants to start? Go ahead. Yes, Julie. Okay, now we're unmuted. So we told you last week. Oh, this is um, where are we from? Virginia. Or Lynchburg. <laughs> All these <laughs> tough questions. I'm so excited about this report. I can't remember. Okay. Where okay. <laughs> okay. So we are not. Um, and we have what phase two, phase three, something phase like that. Three. But we can meet with like 250 people or something. And and um, anyway, so we had this wonderful event on Thursday and it proved to be um, a really good idea and the Lord blessed it so many different ways. So there were 17 families um, with, who had children with special needs and um, at 17 tables which were spaced out but some of them scooted their tables together. <laughs> do? They want to be together and they have to be together. So we had Chick-fil-A sandwiches, chips, water bottles, and juice packs which they were thrilled with. Okay. Um, the servers wore masks and gloves. Um, the, the centerpieces, you guys are gonna love this. The centerpieces were roll, a roll of paper towels, two rolls of toilet paper, one mask, and then uh, which, um, oh, they could take home. And I think they were more thrilled about that than almost <laughs> anything else of the night. And then um, there was a jar filled with index cards and a pen, and the families were encouraged to take this home and write um, out how God is faithful to them, even in the midst of a pandemic. So oh. I would love to follow up with them and ask what they wrote on their cards. So I'm going to endeavor to do that with the families that we know. Um, so they did that. And then uh, the agenda was they had dinner. And then they went. Um, so we had different stations in our main hallway set up for VBS, which is you know every Wednesday. And the last one is coming up this week. And there were different stations to decorate the theme road trip. So at each one of those stations, um, some volunteers were there with their gloves on and their masks on to give out candy to the, to the kids that came through. So they had a little bag and they got their little candy and then they walked through. Um, we were calling it trick or treat for lack of a better term. And then um, they came back in the room for ice cream. And as each family left, um, one leader each um, asked if they wanted to be prayed over, if we could pray over them to do that. One of them left in tears because she was so touched that we would do that. Then um, they were also gifted with a box filled with frozen chicken patties and string cheese, and they were pretty excited about that as well. And they really had a good time. So we're so glad that we did. We were a little like, oh my goodness, is this a good idea or not a good idea? And the kids were good. You know, the ones that were concerned about not, you know, getting too close together, they were pretty sensitive about that. The families, the, the, the parents were really good about be, caring about that. And the ones that didn't care, they were all over each other. And so it was fine with them. So um, it was good. It was worth doing. Well, good. I'm so glad to get that report. Um, I do have to ask though, frozen chicken patties and string cheese, it's kind of random. <laughs> yeah, there was a, a business. Yeah, right, a business that donated uh, many, many, many boxes and they, there were a lot left over. So I don't know what happened, if they had an event that got canceled or something, but there were all these boxes. I know, that is an interesting combination. I, mean, I would be happy too, to get them, I'm just saying, but kind of random, okay. Um, well, that's wonderful. I am so glad. And it sounds like the families are really blessed. And I love how you um, kind of, I, I love the, I even wrote down how God, how God has been faithful even during the pandemic, um, you know, getting families to think about. So they wrote, <laughs> Jace wrote it down too. Um, so they wrote it down and then they took it home with them. Yeah, well, I don't think they actually wrote it down at the table because it was a little chaotic to eat oh, yeah. with your children. <laughs> so yeah, the jars went home. They, the jars went home. So that's why I want to follow up with them because it would have been easier to neglect that, you know, not having any kind of accountability right in front of you. So I'm going to be the accountability. <laughs> okay. Well, that's wonderful. Thank you for sharing and thank you for um, 
just loving and serving your families so well. That's awesome. All right, who else wants to share what's going on? Or introduce themselves. We have some new people today. We're a very casual group, so go ahead and jump in whenever anybody wants to talk. My name is Gail Averett. I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. Yay. We just um, started an inclusion ministry in February, right before the pandemic. We only had two meetings, um, and we have not done anything else um, since then, so it's been a long time. Um, I do have a meeting, I just found out before I logged into this meeting, that my pastor wants to talk to me about the inclusion ministry this week on Thursday. However, it has been very difficult um, reaching the community participants that came to those first two meetings because we didn't have a, we hadn't really formed a relationship yet. Right. So I don't know how, when it, whenever we get started again, how am I supposed to start again? Yeah. Yeah, and only having two meetings, you're right. The, the, you hadn't really had much of a chance to develop a relationship yet. Um, right. Yeah, did, wasn't there somebody else that was in that boat? I thought there was somebody who had just started their job, too. Maybe they're not on today's Zoom. Um, yeah, that's, it's tough. Um, and I don't know if anybody has advice on that. Um, I mean, it's a lot easier if there's these relationships there are that have been formed. Oh, my internet's unstable today. Am I? Am I back? Okay. Um, breaking in and out. Yeah, <laughs> I keep freezing on on my screen too. Um, does anybody have any good advice for Gail on this one? Are Are you working with group homes or individual families? Um, both. Okay. My major contact was with Cuyahoga County Board of Developmental Disabilities. Okay. And then um, some personal um, individuals who deal with um, this population, um, Quantum Leap, mm -hmm. um, a High Five Club, um, Faithful Homes, Josiah's House, um, and then a research person named Pat and then a mother's support group uh, director. Okay. And so I've been getting referrals from them. I would have been getting referrals from them had we been able to do what we were gonna do. We were starting off small, we're a small church, and we were starting off small because I, I didn't want um, shell shock from our volunteers. So we were only doing it once a month so far. Mm -hmm. We visited other inclusion ministries and they do it weekly maybe be off for the summer but since we were just starting and didn't want to fail we were only doing one a month so we've only actually seen these people twice and is your church meeting in person at all at this point no no okay and that makes it yeah it does make it tougher um could i ask a couple questions yeah um uh, gail uh your your meetings are they they more set up as a respite type event or are they set up at the same time as the church and kind of like sunday school and, and things like that how is it that you you're setting it up to work it thanks doc um we set up our meetings for both we have a, a four hour span of time once a month to provide respite for any caregiver or parent that wants to break away and go get her hair done or go to the dinner or go to the movies. So that's part of our ministry. In addition, we do a Sunday school lesson as well. Um, we had a calendar of things that would relate to the month of when we were going to be um, serving them. So for example, February, we talked about love because Valentine's Day is in there. And then we pulled out um, lessons, Bible lessons, to show God's love. So basically I created my own um, curriculum because I didn't know where to get curriculum for something like I was doing because most of it was a weekly, weekly opportunity and I wasn't doing that. So we did both and we served a meal. We have a chef 
and he was um, providing a dinner meal, not only for the community participants, our church participants, and my staff and volunteers. So we were also providing that kind of a one night respite for families. They wouldn't have to worry about what they were gonna cook for dinner. And um, that's how it was starting off. Well, it, it sounds awesome uh, what you're doing uh, with that. Obviously, you know, right now being able to start back up in person is, is tough, especially in those situations. Um, you know, I, I'm excited to hear, you know, your, your pastor wants to talk with you and your, your church, you know, doing that, you guys just starting, that's the big first step uh, with it. And that's the important thing. I know it's hard that COVID jumped in here um, with it. And that's kind of the, the hard thing when you're just trying to start something and try to get any momentum going. Um, but, you know, I'll, I'll throw myself out there. I'm more than happy to talk with you and, and help you in any way in, in you know, doing any, either the respite or, or Sunday programming or any of that, give you any pointers and, and also help on how to talk with your, your leadership in and, and that. I'd be happy to do that offline here. But um, the, the important thing will be, you know, figuring out when, as far as how to restart, figuring out when you can do that. We are trying to do some things outside the box to, because we can't meet in person. You know, we're dealing with the same thing you are, Gail. You know, it's, it's just hard to do our respite. We haven't done any of our respite now either. And, and I've pretty much have already canceled it for the rest of the year. We're just not gonna be able to do any in 2020. Um, and I, I don't know when in 2021 we can, but what we're gonna do, we've got, we just scheduled four uh, virtual uh, respites uh, this month and we, we're dividing them by age um, so we've got preschoolers we're going to do a 20 to 30 minute zoom session and we've got a music therapist who's going to come in and we're going to do do basically music music therapy with them uh, with that we're going to do in one of the evenings we're going to do uh, about an hour session with our elementary age group where we're going to do um, probably a, a, a massive scavenger hunt um, where they're going to get a, just, you know, have fun doing everything through the home. Um, then for our, our teens, we're going to do a, uh, and we're trying to decide which one's which we'll do one for our teens and one for our adults. One will be doing karaoke. The other will do dance party revolution um, and an hour where they get to do that, where it's not going to be true respite. The parents are still going to be there. They may even have to help with it. But then once it gets going, the parents may be able to have just a little bit of, of a break with that. Um, and so we're going to be doing that over Zoom. We just did our camp. Uh, despite everyone saying how tired they are of Zoom, um, we, we had just tremendous results with our, with our camp and our Zoom uh, uh, interactive sessions and, and got tremendous response from our families. And so we're going to move move ahead with that, despite people saying they're tired of Zoom. Um, if we're able to give families a break um, of any kind, they're going to jump on it, um, is what, what we're finding. So that's what we're going to do. But Gail, I'd, I'd be happy to offer my services and help you out. Okay, I will be happy to give you my phone number. Yeah, and I'll, I'll put my email in the, the chat here for you. Oh, okay. I'm not hooked up to the chat, but... Um... I'll get it from Beth or yeah, I can, I'll, I'll get it to you, Gail. Okay. Um, thanks. Also in the chat, there is a question. Um, so um, Musi is joining us from Houston and she would like to know Dallas. if there's um, a repository of autism providers for ABA therapy services. I don't think anybody else I'm looking around. Nobody else is from Houston on here. Are you? I don't think so. Can, can, uh, excuse me, Beth. Can yes. um, Doc say where he's from? Oh, oh yeah, tell them about yeah. Tell them about SOAR. Yeah, so I'm I'm in Kansas. Um, I'm the executive director for SOAR Special Needs. Um, I for previous eight years I started up a special needs ministry in a church. Started with three individuals, grew it to over 900, and now we've become an independent nonprofit. Where um, one we assist churches and organizations in starting. Uh, special needs ministries, disability ministries, or taking what you have and helping take it to the next level. We do a camp, we do respite nights, um, and uh, we're now focusing on families uh, where we're going to be able to uh, answer their three main questions. Will my child ever be able to provide for themselves? 
who's going to take care of my child once they're gone, once I'm gone, and then who's going to take care of me as a parent. So we've, we've become an independent nonprofit now. Our church is still doing disability ministry. It's just not sore anymore and not under my umbrella. Uh, the, we've become an independent uh, uh, 501c3, but an a outreach partner of the church and, and uh, out see if, our, allow our vision to, to grow and reach more families and more churches. And then we host the Wonderfully Made Conference, which, by the way, registration will be opening this week for the Wonderfully Made Special Needs Conference. That'll be October 19th through the 23rd. Um, it's going to be, we've got 60 speakers. We've got two tracks, one for families and one for, for ministries. Um, and we'll have early bird specials out there. And we've got group discounts for churches. So if you want to get your volunteers involved, too, we'll be able to help you there with that. But Emily Colson, Steve Gersovich, um, myself. Um, are, are all keynote speakers along with uh, Rex and Jennifer Hudler, who are the color commentators of the Royals. They've got an adult son with Dan syndrome, but it, it'll be great. But that's real quick on who I am and where I'm at. Yeah, so you can find all this info on um, soarspecialneeds.org. So it's S O A R specialneeds.org. Thank you. Right. And um, Musi, did you see Catherine put a little something in the chat for you there, some, a link to some providers from the Autism Speaks website. Speaking of Autism Speaks, um, uh, Catherine, do you wanna fill us in on the conversation that's happening on Wednesday? Sure. Um, yeah, so our Wednesday webinar series is continuing. And this week we're going to be talking with Janet Williams um, Janet is uh, a staff person with Autism Speaks. She's currently serving as the Director of Community Outreach and is the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Project Manager for Autism Speaks. Um, I met her about a year or so ago. She was working on developing um, their program to reach out to um, faith communities. They called it Blue Blessings. Um, she's just a wealth of information, great lady, and so we're going to be talking about um, the topic meeting people where they are, black mental health, and the critical role of the church. Um, she's just, again, she's a wealth of information. She's a, a single mom with a, a son on the autism spectrum, and so she's going to be sharing, you know, a lot of her own personal experiences, but also, you know, how critically important it really is for the church to be involved in supporting families that have mental health type needs. So um, I just encourage you, if you haven't signed up already, go to our events page to be able to register for that, or we'll be live streaming on the Not Alone Parents Facebook page. All right, thank you. All right, who else would like to, Al, good morning. It's been a busy weekend, <clears throat> busy week. Um, last week we had Young Life Capernaum day camp, a virtual camp. That went very well. I wasn't sure how virtual camp would go. Young Life does some amazing stuff. They came up with some great programs from music to teaching to everything. So we just kind of took what they had and went with it. We did an actual live event together with uh, the participants on Wednesday uh, with snacks and things like that. And I think we had six uh, of our people with their families, things like that. Uh, many hadn't seen each other in three or four months, so it was quite a festive time to be together. We wore our masks and kept our distance, but it still was good. Um, this coming, that was New Jersey, our New Jersey club. This week we're having the two new, that was New York, I'm sorry. The two New Jersey clubs are meeting this week online again, same program. We're meeting up on Thursday again for a fair at the end of it, same rules. Um, the, um, the New Jersey clubs met up as well on Thursday for another event. Um, cars drove by and we had carnival games for them like tic-tac-toe and, and shoot your favorite leader with a water gun and stuff like that. And that was, again, a popular thing. We liked getting it together. At Liquid Church in New Jersey, they had a, our Sunday sermon was about how we're going to reopen. And um, we're in phase one now, which is each campus is going to have different events for their campus members, uh, keeping distance and things like that. And there's an announcement that we're having a drive-in movie next weekend. I just signed up for it before this meeting. And so our main campus will have a 40-foot um, a screen there with uh, bring your own chair, no food, things like that. So that's 
something we're doing that was announced. And then next month, Lord willing, we will start gathering again on Sundays in person. We're calling it Liquid on, on the Lawn that will be outside. Um, and um, our two biggest campuses with the biggest lawns will be gathering in person. You have to sign up and wear masks and the usual stuff, but we will start gathering again, Lord willing, if things keep going as so they are. What if there's liquid on the lawn? What happens then? Oh, um, I don't know. I don't know <laughs> if they've thought that far ahead, but okay. we won't meet inside. Um, but we're considering in, um, in October, perhaps going inside. But again, we don't know yet what the, how that'll go, but we're moving forward in that direction at this point. And also Johnny and Friends Pennsylvania is doing a camp this week. Mm -hmm. um, so we're part of that too. So this is a crazy week. Yeah. And the, and the Global Leadership Summit is on Thursday and Friday as well. So there's just a lot going on. There's a few week. things going on this week. Yeah. 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 I know um, several Johnny and Friends camps are meeting, um, you know, like kind of this week, next week um, out near our area. So Michigan and Ohio are both um, coming up. Um, so my church and I'm in Cleveland. So, and I know Amy's in Cleveland and Gail's in Cleveland. So my church has been meeting outdoors for a few weeks now. It rained on Sunday, so we did not meet. Um, so they just stream it live from the sanctuary, but nobody, nobody's allowed to be in the building. So it's only the people that are talking or singing or whatever. Um, but starting in not this Sunday, but next Sunday, um, Children's Ministry will be hosting, um, we have a couple little outdoor areas. Um, some are enclosed and some are, you know, like fenced in and some aren't. We will have, let's see, starting at, I think, three-year-olds, yeah, three and four year olds, five and six year olds, and then elementary, we're going to have outdoor time <laughs> during the service. So um, we're gonna see how that goes. It will require reservations. You know, the parents will have to make reservations. And this morning during staff meeting, we went through what all the rules are gonna be and how we're gonna pull this off. Um, so, but we're, we're excited and we hope that more families will um, come back and I'm hoping that some of the families that I serve will will be able to do this although I know that a lot won't and we're we at this point we we don't have a like a, a space outdoors just won't work for my older um, classes at this point so um, so we're doing that and then another thing that we're doing starting in September the children's ministry team, which the special needs ministry is part of, is going to record a, like a short little children's service that will live stream between the regular services. Um, so we're just trying to, you know, like around here and my Cleveland people will, will second this, schools are all over the place. Um, the county that my church is in and that um, Amy and Gail are in just, um, they went all virtual um, for, for school. The county that I live in, which is like, you know, five miles down the road is going back in person. So it's like, it's just all over the place around here. So we're just trying to come up with as many different options for families um, as we can. So. Can I ask um, you the virtual doesn't always, I'm sorry. Um, Lucy, um, no, go on, Gail. The virtual is not available for every special need home. I know. Um, I know. And so yeah. that has been a handicap for me. Yeah, to it's, it's a real challenge. It is absolutely a real challenge. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Lucy, I'm sorry. No, no, you're good. Thank you, Gail. And, and nice to meet you. Actually, this is my second time here. I have lots of questions, y'all. And I'm thinking, oh my God, we have five minutes. Anyway, real quick. <laughs> So I'm in Dallas and the church that I belong to, we have about four campuses. So I don't know for those on this call, what, what, what's the capacity, like the, the volume of 
the church, right? Is it 5,000 plus below 1,000? Because we don't have a mental inclusion ministry per se. And I'm so glad that I found this key ministries and different people from all over the, the country, different states. But I sent this information over to like our small groups to see if at least uh, join the call, right? And I sent it over to our, one of the women's groups that I belong to. I, mis- I shared the other time, out of the 20 women, four of us have children on the spectrum. And, and Catherine, thank you for sending that because that's, that's what, that's what is, very, is, is ignored. And I'm not going to say rejected, that's a strong word, but black with a disability, right? That's like the underprivileged, ignored population, right? And right. so for a church that, like ours, huge church, I don't know, I don't know how to drive that message. And Beth, I know you reached out to me saying, if there's anything I can do to help us. I, I, I don't want to start. I know the people, we have a, we have a section of people to start that. And I've raised red flags, white flags, whatever. But I don't quite understand. Like, why don't we have a mental inclusion ministry at this big church? Like, I don't, I don't get it. I don't know what to do. Um, I don't know how to, obviously I can't go to church. You know, it's all email, Zoom, right? Mm-hmm. COVID. And so it just it just bothers me that there's lots of resources. People are willing to help. Look at Doc with his, um, your organization. It started off from passion and a purpose. And now look at this, you know, organization about special needs. You have a conference. You have people coming to speak. I mean, all this, like families here in Dallas. Yeah, so I don't know. I'm, I'm at a loss. I don't know what to do. I've been praying about it. And, and the reason why I'm saying that, I, I don't mind helping, but I don't want to start something. I don't want to be the lead of it. This is my full-time job. I have a child on the spectrum right now. We have home ABA therapy services. Somebody's at the house. And so it, it just, for some reason, it bothers me. It bothers me that we don't have that at our church. It bothers me that, you know, raising the right flag, like, yeah, we'll start something. But it's been, if, even before COVID. And then on top of that, sorry, yeah, I'm going to be on, on this road for a minute. I don't mean to complain. I'm just venting and God help me. This, <laughs> Even for that, like I've, I've asked about like the deaf and hard of hearing community, right? So you have the closed captions when it's worship and praise, but when the pastor's preaching, we don't have those. So already you've, you know, dismissed a population there. And now that it's COVID, then what? Right. And so like, I'm glad to see this every week sharing what you guys are doing with the kids ministry, what have you. Uh, Reverend Sylvia has been gracious enough to send me material that, you know, that they're doing with our church. I don't, oh, she's there. She's right there. And so I, I don't know y'all, if it's a prayer item, please remember that. But I don't, I don't know. Like I, like I've waved the red flag, the white flag all together. Maybe I need to insert the blue flag for <laughs> autism, <laughs> red, white, and blue, right? But I don't know what to do. Well, so I'm so glad you're here. First of all, I kind of think of us as like a support group in a way. I mean, I know that's, it's, you all have been very helpful for me. So um, like the mental health inclusion piece specifically, like I I think I'm looking forward to the conversation on Wednesday because I think Mm -hmm. we're all going to learn a lot um, from that conversation. And Catherine, I I know you have, I mean, this is your specialty. like maybe even after that conversation, you and Musi would have more like strategic planning that you maybe I don't know. I'll I'll let you and yeah yeah I'll and, and the chat because there's some stuff in here. I think that I think that it would be really helpful to to be able to hear what Janet has to say or participate in that conversation and and I can maybe even connect you with her. I think she's she's just you know really super busy right now but um i mean she you know she's a she's a single mom and she the first time we ever met she talked to me about how you know she went from church to church and no special needs ministry and so you know that she after a couple of experiences like that then the first time she would go to the church she would just hit him with the question where's your special needs ministry what are you going to do for my son you know, how are you going to be ministering with my son and teaching my son what he needs to know, you know, to, to mm-hmm. understand yeah. about Jesus? I mean, you got all these programs for all these other kids. What are you doing for my son? And deer in the headlights. So, I mean, 
Yeah, Musi, thank you so much for what you said. I mean, you know, we, we are open to new ideas. We are working hard kind of behind the scenes to try to make inroads in places where we don't have a lot of connections. Um, but, you know, anybody who's got connections in, you know, churches or ministries that you think may not be connected with what we do, we'd love to have those connections. So please feel free to reach out to me or Beth with, you know, with any, you know, any connections that, where you feel like, um, you know, what we have to offer and what the others on this call have to offer um, would be helpful. I mean, we are more than happy to have those conversations. Absolutely. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll jump in and second on that. Um, yeah, especially on the, the mental health. I mean, what Catherine and, and key ministry, everyone does, it's second to none. But, you know, one of the things that I, I think everyone needs to be aware of, especially when, especially when you're trying to start a, a ministry, whether it is mental health inclusion or whether, whether it's disability inclusion, you know, it's something that I, I talk with every, you know, senior, you know, leadership team that I meet with. Um, it's rare that you ever find a church that doesn't have a children's ministry. Why? Mm -hmm. Every senior leadership team has children. They know the importance right. of it. It's rare that you ever find a church that doesn't have a care ministry that mm -hmm. takes care of the elderly, takes care of the shut-ins, mm -hmm. takes care of hospital visits, mm -hmm. and, and so on and so forth. Why? Every senior leadership team has parents who are aging, and they understand that importance. Well, why don't they have mental inclusion? Why don't they have special needs? Because they don't have family members with it, and they've never experienced it, and they don't know the importance of it. So that's why it takes individuals like all of us here on this call to educate them. And it's not just you know a one-time thing. It's actually talking to them more, and then bringing scripture into mm -hmm. it, showing them how... Mm -hmm. God commands us, you know, right. it's Luke 14, commanding right. us to have disability right. ministry, to have mental health inclusion ministry. Um, that's what it is. And, and help open their eyes to that and show them that it's not that hard. It doesn't cost a lot of money. There are so many myths out there of, you know, it costs too much. It, you know, you, we don't have enough volunteers. That's just lies. That's all comes straight from, from Satan. And, right. and, you know, I can help debunk all those myths and, and that, but it, it just helps bringing that, them education. At the same time, it's important to bring families who have disabilities to the table with them so they can actually hear from those families how hard it is to be able to go to church, um, you know, mm -hmm. with mental health even is that, and, and that, you know, no, when you go to church, you can't just sit there and be expected that you take care of your own child because many churches do that. They go, okay, we'll do it, but you're going to have to be the one who, who leads the buddy. That's not the answer. You know, we, we don't start a children's ministry say, okay, parents, you're going to take care of your own kids. You know, no other ministry does that way. We can't do that with disability ministry either. So it's just a lot of education and, and things out there. And again, there's a lot of pieces of information out there that we can do to help educate them. But it's, it's just slowly helping educate them, letting them see the numbers. You know, when, when you stop and realize that only a, the latest research shows only 11% of all evangelical churches in the United States today are even capable of handling disability ministry. And then when you talk about mental health, that number is even lower. I don't know the number there, Catherine, you may know, but I know I, it's, it's even I don't lower. Know. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't know the number. But I promise I'm it's, not... it's I, I, my guess, I put it in the 2% range. And I think that may be high. I'm guessing it's probably more like 1% for, for mental health not, inclusion. I have not seen, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I have not seen any data on on that kind of statistic, Doc, because I think it's so small that nobody's yeah. asking the question. I mean, even the people that do this kind of research into, you know, what what churches are offering what they're, you know, what they're going through, what have you. I mean, there's like Barna, there's, there's a uh, Wheaton that does that kind of research. I've never seen anything with that yeah. kind of number. Yeah. So it, you see, I just, and everybody, I just added yeah. links to um, getting started on mental health ministry and on special needs ministry in the chat. Um, and the first step in both of those, you know, and th this, these are our resources that Key Ministry developed. You know, th these are the plans. So, you know, it's not gonna it's not gonna fit every situation, but we think this is a pretty good overview of what everybody kind of has to go through to get something started in their church. But for either one of those, the first step is getting senior leadership on board because 
because like, I mean, to Doc's point, if, if leadership has not had this kind of experience, they're not thinking about it. I mean, they just aren't. And it's not because they don't care. It's just because it doesn't impact their life directly. Right, you know, right. I mean, that's why so many of these ministries right. have been started by parents with passion. So right. anyway. This is um, good. And Thank I you. love, I love uh, Jennifer shared in the chat that her church started its ministry when they had approximately 200 people. They now have a congregation of over 25,000 with five campuses. Um, so, and it's the ministry started with one child. So her, her info is in the chat if you want to reach out to her. Yes. Um, okay. All right. Good stuff. Good stuff. Um, so jumping back to um, kind of what we're dealing with right now as far as how do we serve for the, you know, if we have an existing ministry, how are we, how are we serving our people right now in the midst of not being able to meet in person? Um, Deanna would like to know more about... Um, success for the virtual event. So um, specifics, tips and tricks. I know Allison would definitely be a good person to talk to. Oh, there she is. Okay, Allison would be a good person to talk to. Um, so if anybody would like to share maybe their favorite, like what worked the best or one really cool thing that you did, because um, I know we've, over the weeks, we've had some really great ideas, but Allison, Doc, anybody else want to share um, something that's worked really well? Yeah. Sure. Yep. Sylvia, you go first. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Allison. Um, <laughs> well, you know, here in Maryland, life is very limited. <laughs> in fact, our numbers are going back up, so we are downgrading some things. But I've been starting and, and keeping the volunteers engaged have been very, very difficult sometimes. Um, but I've started doing one-on-one -on -one virtual respite where I contact the, the parent and I set up activities for the child and I to do while mm -hmm. I can't do it with everybody because everybody's not at a place where the parent can leave them to do the activity. But I know the child's favorite songs. So I start out with that, and then we might do a Bible lesson, and it can be any time during the week. It's not just on Sunday, um, but where I set an hour for the parent that's conducive to what the parent needs and, and what the parent has to do. And the parent sets the child up, and I keep the child engaged for an hour while the parent, the parent was supposed to be folding clothes. She took a nap. <laughs> and when she came back, I told her that was fine. It was whatever you needed to do during that time. Um, we've also started uh, virtual Sunday school classes where we have a planned activity, teaching them how to pray, teaching them songs that they can sing, and then just having a word where we define the word, we act out the word. Uh, we play the word, we, whatever we can do with that one particular word for that particular Sunday. Um, and this is the way it's going to be for us. And we know until 2021, um, we have um, our church seats 4,000 on a Sunday. And our pastor is not allowing anybody to come back into church until everybody feels comfortable. Uh, we're not dividing it up. We're not voting. We're not doing any of that kind of stuff. So we have to be real creative in what it is that we're doing, um, aside from mailing activities and things to the parents. Um, going back to the, the, what Doc said about educating leadership and that it's not going to impact the leader until they have a family member that has a disability but families have to own the fact that they have an individual with a disability and just because leadership you want to go and sit down and talk with leadership does not necessarily mean that leadership owns the disability of their own family member 
so that you have to have a person who is compassionate about what it is that they want to have in place for the children. And I started the ministry with one child. Um, we have about 30, 40 families that we support right now. Um, but again, it goes back to what your passion is, what your purpose is, what your calling is, um, and how you embrace it. It's not going to necessarily be because leadership embraces it. They allow you to do it, but they don't necessarily have to embrace it. And you are the one who has to, on a daily basis, be promoting it. Um, okay, that's enough for me. Thank you, Sylvia. Allison? Hi there. So I'm um, in Pennsylvania. It's a bit of a similar situation to you, Beth, where we've got this, my, my two children are rising, a uh, first grader and a senior. Uh, they're all online until after Thanksgiving. But uh, where our church is based, our main campus, we're actually, they're actually doing a hybrid model. So it's a little bit confusing. Um, but within the special needs ministry, we've had some success this summer doing um, a, sort of a mixture of events throughout the, the summer. We've had a very popular turnout each month for a pizza and craft pickup. So families drive through the campus, we deliver a pizza and a bag of crafts for the family um masked up changing gloves um so that's worked well for families especially um if internet ac accessibility is an issue for them um and also we've done it on a saturday when obviously schools aren't providing food as well so that's that's been really popular um we've had some success with um some zoom respites where we've had things like what doc was saying the scavenger hunts the activities we've had a uh, we, the, the last one was a dance music night so that was popular too um and we've had oh we had a talent show as well that was curtis that was somebody's idea on here <laughs> yes it's all about getting all these ideas yes. <laughs> and my my biggest success which i know al and doc were cheering me on earlier was that i had um a dad's um support group meeting on zoom i had three very enthusiastic enthusiastic dads that had some connection with each other at church but didn't really know each other um but they all have sons between the age of 11 and 16 on the autistic spectrum and i have to say i had the best zoom meeting in the fact that i don't think i've laughed so much for a long time but also their vulnerability they came together they came up with ideas for me I've also said to them going forward, it doesn't necessarily have to have me there as the mom. <laughs> um, but at the same time, they've got somewhere where they can, they've said now, you know, I know somebody I want to bring to this. I know somebody who could do with this meeting, but they also independently have arranged to meet together in person with their three boys at a socially distanced, you know, they can do something together. I think they just want to throw around a football and just, just socialize together and have some, time where they're talking about what it means to be a dad what it means to be a dad with a child on the autistic spectrum but what it also means to be a dad with a child who's now going into teenage years so that was really exciting for me that was my my big win for the fact that a the dads trusted me to come along um and that b they've got it they've got plans that they want to take it further so that was yeah i was excited for that thank you that's great Doc, did you want to add any? Yeah, I'll, I'll talk about the actual um, virtual sessions themselves. Um, so in, in our, our sessions, kind of the way we ran them, we would have a room host. Um, first off, we did them on Zoom. Um, if any of you don't have Zoom accounts, um, things to check into if your church doesn't have it, you need to check into something called TechSoup. Um, and, and your churches need to check into that check techsoup.com, T-E-C-H-S-O-U-P. Um, basically, it allows nonprofits to get all kinds of programs, either free to half price. And so I was able to get all of our Zoom half price. And so we got multiple licenses um, at that. But we've got, we had our, our rooms and then we have a host for the room. Um, but then we would also have room buddies. Um, so we would have three to four 
of our volunteers who were in the room who their main job was to help interact with our participants. And if there were behaviors that were starting up, they would help, you know, kind of talk them down or help with that. At the same time, we would have kind of a, a tech person who would be on who, who would help mute everybody when needed. Um, because that's going to be key. You want to have someone who's going to be able to control control that, and then would be able to, you know, uh, also control video. Um, because if someone all of a sudden decides to start stripping off their clothes, we don't need to be showing that to everybody. Um, and we had to do that once or twice where we just shut off their video. Um, so it's important that you have um, a tech person. I don't recommend it to be the same person as the host, um, because that's a lot on the host plate to try to be running everything and then making sure everyone is okay. So if you have a tech person as well, and they can just simply sit there and with Zoom, you can mute individual people, you can mute everybody, you can turn off certain people's cameras, and then you can ask them to turn it back on. And that was really successful for us, that worked very well. And then when we wanted the, the individuals come back on, we would just ask them to, to come back on. Um, and we had a pretty even split of, individuals who were able to manage Zoom themselves, they could turn on and off their own mute, they could turn on and off their camera, and then we had half who would have a caretaker or an in-house buddy who was there with them who would, who would help them and assist them with that. So, so we, we had both and it was very successful uh, with that. Where, and then the, the whole key with it would be try to interact with them with it. We would, you know, anything that we would do, we did interactive, like we did a Bible verse, for instance. Um, we, we taught Bible verses two different ways. First, we taught it in sign language so that all of our nonverbal individuals could learn that as well. But then we created it um, on a PowerPoint that we screen shared and had it all written out on the screen. And then every time we'd go through it, different words would disappear off the screen. And we'd all go around and take turns learning the words. And by the time the week was over, every single one of you know, our campers memorized the verse both in sign and if they were verbal they, they were able to to say it so that was pretty cool and it's just ways that you can be interactive that's the whole key with it is you want to make sure you can be as interactive as possible try to get everyone involved but that's why it's important to have the room buddies in there as well and they can help interact with with people too so um i would have um you know at least and again depends on the number of people you would have on on there on your screen because you know like on on this call, it's impossible for us to see everybody on the screen at once. So we would have a room buddy make sure they had each page. So we had everybody being monitored at once, if that makes sense. And that just helps it be more successful. Doc, I've got a question. When you talk about room host, room buddies, are you using Zoom rooms, rooms or breakout rooms? Uh, we, we just use the regular Zoom like we are right now. Um, and then breakout just, rooms, not Zoom rooms. Breakout. Yeah, breakout not the Zoom rooms, rooms just the breakout rooms. Um, we do have the capability of doing Zoom rooms, um, but we chose not to do that. We thought that was going to add a, another level of complexity that mm -hmm. we chose not to do, but we've, we've got that where we may do that later, and we may, we may try that on our upcoming events where we have, you know, our, like, dance party and, and some of those things. We may break those into smaller rooms so more people can – can participate because we may have 50, 50 participants in that. So we'll probably do the Zoom rooms instead on that instead of the big participant room like this. Does that help? Gotcha. But you were talking about breakout rooms from this size of thing into breakouts of maybe 10 people in a room. Breakout Correct. Room. Yeah. Yeah. We, we would do that later. We did not do that for camp. We just stayed on um, just like this for our camp. We had everyone oh. all together. And okay. Everyone all right. was all together screen shared. And that's why I was saying we had buddies on each page. Um, so, you know, they, we, we make sure that the buddies were able to see a different page so that we could have everyone seen. And we kind of chatted back and forth, either via text or private chat. And we also turned off the chat for all the participants so they couldn't be playing with the chat. That's another important thing. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, they get wrapped up in chatting with everyone. Yeah, yeah. Good. This is actually a whole. If you search on 
on the internet, there are now just a ton of games that you could do for Zoom and all kinds of entertainment that's free. Um, and so it's, it's out there, it's, it's growing literally every day of things that you can do on Zoom with individuals that's completely free. Um, there's also, if you want to purchase some programs, there's some really cheap um, programs. Um, one, it's not, it may be called Trivia Maker, it's Trivia something. Um, and I bought it for an entire year for like 10 bucks. Um, but it includes Will of Fortune. Um, uh, uh, oh, there's like five different games on there that you can play with people and you can put in your own words. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we put in like our Bible verse um, in, in that for, for Will of Fortune. So that was a fun way to do it. Cool. So speaking of chat, there's some chat going on. Um, first of all, Diana, I'm cracking up at yours, but um, Al posted um, a link to a special Fathers Network closed Facebook group that he's in. And they have Zoom gatherings. And so there's a link in there for that. Um, and he posted, yeah, he posted, a, um, oh yeah, he okay, posted the correct link. Okay, and tomorrow's is on being emotionally present. Um, also, I wanna make sure before, cause we're getting close to our time here. Um, Key Ministry has two more, um, well, a webinar and a round table this month. So, well, two, two webinars. So Catherine already, already told you about the August 5th. Catherine, could you share about the August 12th and then I'll do the August 19th? Sure, um, it's not up on our events page yet, but um, it is scheduled. We're gonna be talking with um, uh, Teresa Reynolds. She's a professor at Longwood University and she has um, done a lot of interesting things that um, you know are, are really just excellent uh, make her an excellent guest for the season that we're all in uh, with back to school. So um, she, the title that is going to be for August 12th is, and I have to look it up. I'm sorry. Um, hang on just a second. Is going back to school in a pandemic, addressing the anxieties and strategies for self care. And so um, we're going to be talking about, you know, obviously everybody's feeling a lot of anxiety. Things are changing you know, right up until the last minute, and I'm sure they will continue to change after we get actually back into the school season. Um, but Ms. Reynolds has been a, uh, she's a longtime counselor and former K-12 school social worker. Um, she did threat assessments um, while she was in that role, meaning, you know, she was the one who worked with children who may be suicidal, um, you know, really struggling with significant levels of anxiety. Um, and now she does a, a similar kind of thing in, um, in the, you know, uh, higher education setting at Longwood University. So we're going to talk about, um, you know, the different perspectives, parent, child, educator, and then also self-care strategies for students, for parents, and educators um, to address the anxiety of the season. So hope you can join us on August 12th. That'll be a very timely one indeed, because I can't imagine a single parent a, I mean, any parent who's not feeling stress right now, one way or the other. Ooh, Al, I like your background. Um, and then on the 19th, um, which is also Wednesday, so same thing, noon Eastern time, we'll have our, dis our monthly disability ministry video roundtable. So it's this type of um, forum where we can all talk and share. Um, and we're going to talk about making our websites as accessible as our ministries. So, um, we're gonna have, um, it's, it, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, and there will be people that will be participating in the discussion who have um, some really great experience um, and probably some commentary on um, how accessible our websites are. So, um, so we're talking everything from, you know, is your, is your website accessible to somebody maybe who has a vision impairment um, and uses accessible technology? Um, and we will also talk about what are the things that your website should have so that a family who is, you know, trying to figure out if they're going to come to your, when we're back in the building, come to your building for the first time or, 
maybe join your online things now. Like, what do you need to have on your website um, for families, especially families impacted by um, disability, including, um, you know, hidden disabilities and mental health conditions. So I'm really excited about that. So all of these things, um, you will be able to find them on keyministry.org slash events, and we'll have the August 12th one up there really soon, like maybe today. Um, all right, we just have a couple more minutes left. So does anybody have any last minute questions or comments or things that you're gonna be working on this week? Actually two weeks, cause I don't think we meet next week, right? I'll, I'll just throw out a, a quick invite for everyone. Um, uh, since it, it goes right along with, with what we were just talking about. This week's Talk with Doc is gonna be childhood trauma in a pandemic. Gonna be talking with uh, Jolene Philo um, on that. So uh, it's gonna be good for, for not just parents, but also ministry leaders, because that's gonna really you know, affect us as we welcome families back, realize our kids are, have, have gone through you know, a trauma. Um, going through all this and they're not going to be the same and their routines all out of order and so need to know how to be able to help them through that so again you can go to sourcespecialneeds.org to sign up for that it'll be noon central on friday awesome thank you all right everybody um thank you for being on here today we'll meet again in two weeks if anybody i'm so happy our new people joined us today um please feel free to reach out to us at Key Ministry if there's anything we can help you with. Um, so it's beth at keyministry.org or Catherine at keyministry.org. Um, and I invite you to check out the website too. And um, we'll see you all in two weeks. Have a good one. Bye. See you. Yes. <laughs>